we really need to teach parents and kids how to have healthy relationships with technology when they're on it and especially when they're off it. You know, and like we talked about sleep is I'll tell kids, if you get nothing out of this four weeks, you need to understand how important sleep is because without sleep, you can't, you can't be a good gamer. You can't be a good social media person. You can't be a good student. You can't be a good member of your family. You can't be good at anything if you don't get enough sleep. everyone. If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. Let's get this show started. You guys, I have the most amazing episode in store for you today. Holy cow, is it phenomenal. I can't wait to dive in. So first... Welcome to the show. If you are brand new, I'm so glad that you are here, that you have found us. Maybe someone passed this along to you. Maybe you stumbled upon the Bomb Mom podcast through social media or YouTube. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm glad that you did. It is going to be an amazing show. Always go back and listen though. So if you just came on episode 165, which we're not on, go back and listen to episode 20. Go back to episode one and listen because this podcast is just full of inspiration, motivation, nutritional stuff, mindset stuff, sex, like parenting, everything. You get everything you need to live your best life ever on this podcast. So I love it. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here for another episode. Always rate and review. Give me five stars. Seriously, you guys, if you haven't done that yet and you're like, oh my God, I listen to this podcast all the time and I've never rated and reviewed, please do it because it does a lot of really good things for the show. So rate and review. I have to tell you guys too, we have been globally ranked number in the top 1%, top 1% globally, I can't even talk, I can't even say it, say it, globally ranked by listen notes in the entire world, this podcast And that has not been possible without you guys. Yeah, top 1% globally ranked by Listen Notes, which it's it's a whole global ranking system for podcasting and all the stuff. So it's a big deal. It's really cool. And we're in the top 1%. I'm, I'm like stoked about it. So keep listening. Keep passing on the Bomb Mom podcast because we are doing it. You guys are listening. You're changing lives. You're helping me. It's, it's so freaking cool. I just love it. If you guys are looking, you know how I got to plug bomb mom in. Busy to bomb fit mom. If you guys are looking for December, uh uh-huh, for a challenge, you want to be pushed and motivated through this month of crazy holidayness, go to the show notes. Go to the show notes. See what we have to offer. Get in there. My challenge is a 30-day challenge. I'm helping you get the kick in the butt that you need for the holiday season. We're not going to gain weight. Uh Uh-uh. No, ma'am. We're going to keep showing up for us. So if you need help doing that, our challenge is 30 days. You get the Bomb Mom app, the workouts, like all the stuff. It's like a good introduction to Bomb Mom life. And then if you're like, no, I'm ready. I want to do this thing. Like, how can I really get involved? And Melissa, I love you. I've been following you. Thank you. And I'm ready. Book a call with me. I'm going to put the link to my Calendly in there. Book a call with me. Let's get on the phone and see how we can work together. Maybe you get started on my app program. Maybe you just get the bomb mom app we start working together right dropping the workouts help you yeah all the things like maybe that's what we do totally fine i love it check out the show notes okay we put everything in there and for today's guests or guest not we only have one (laughs) all of his information is in the show notes too and you're going to want to hear it so oh my god let's dive in are you ready today's show is going to ruffle feathers It is. I know it is. I'm going to get a lot of emails. And if you want to email me, I welcome them. Bring them on info at melissavogelfitness.com. Email me. Okay. Send me a DM. It's Melissa Vogel on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook, Melissa Vogel Fitness. I'm all over the place. Follow me. Okay. Get on there. I'm going to ruffle feathers. We are talking all about electronics and cell phones and addiction and detoxing your kids. And I know this is not something that people want to hear. I know it's something that people don't really want to talk about because we hear this and we go, oh my God, I am aware that it's a problem in my home. I am aware that my kids are addicted. I know it's an issue. 
and I don't want to be reminded. Like, I don't want to hear it. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to change it. I don't want to hear it. And I'm telling you, like, out of sight, out of mind is not the route to take when it comes to electronics and phones and all of the stuff with your kids. It's not. I get it. I realize and know that it's not something you want to dive into, but I'm telling you, parents, this is a major problem. This addiction to electronics and how we are going about parenting, it's not on a good path, you guys. And I'm right there with you. Like, I am not here to judge. I am not here to place blame. I don't want you to feel the guilt and the shame, but I'm telling you right now, we can't ignore this. We have to pay attention to what is going on with our kids and their cell phone use and the addiction. And we have the most amazing guests to help work us through this and and explain things to us and really open our eyes. He's phenomenal. It's Michael Jacobus, and he's an internationally renowned camp director and youth development specialist. And he has a passion for empowering young minds. He founded Reset Summer Camp to combat the challenges of screen addiction after witnessing its impact on his own family. As a parent who once dealt with a gaming addicted child, Michael's journey makes him a relatable advocate. Reset Summer Camp offers an immersion clinical program on a university campus, blending a summer camp atmosphere with therapy to help participants detox and develop vital life skills. Michael and his dedicated team are on a mission to create a healthier, more balanced future for our youth. The word detoxed is used, guys, because it's real. He shares stories about what he is seeing with these kids showing up to camp. And it's terrifying that this is what's happening. This this is real world stuff. And I guarantee there is a large percent of you that are listening to this I'm right there with you. Like I am no like perfect parent when it comes to electronics and all of cell phones and social media and all that in my phone or in in my home. Trust me, I am not over here like throwing stones. I get it, you guys. I am right there with you with my kids and my teen. It's the world we live in, right? But I'm telling you, after you listen to this podcast, it's going to change your view on what is going on with your children. It's going to change your view on how you look at their cell phone use. It's going to change your view on what they're doing in their bedroom and gaming and social media and how they hold their phones and their posture, all of it. And I bring this up in the podcast because I know I always try to play devil's advocate when I am interviewing someone or, you know, even just a solo episode. I'm always trying to think like, what would the listener be thinking right now? Like, what would this mom be asking? And I know many of you, there'll be a point where you're like, oh my God, if I took away the iPad from my kid or the cell phone or did anything like that, they would throw the biggest fit ever. And it would be freaking lockdown city in the house and we'd have a lockdown and it would be insane. Yes. That is going to happen. And I'm here to remind you guys as parents that you are the ones in charge. It is your home. You set the rules. You set the boundaries. And it's okay. Let them cry. Let them be mad at you. Let them. You are helping them in ways that they don't know yet. Okay? It's okay to be that parent. It's okay to say, hey, you know what? Cell phone's off past nine. What? Why? Why are you punishing me? You guys, I get it. Like, I I get it. I live this with you guys. But having rules in place and constantly reminding yourself, I am the parent. I am here to better their life. I am here to help them be a better human. We have to set boundaries. I know this is going to be tough if you take action. If you're like, you know what? We shouldn't have, you know, use after nine or we should have a phone basket like Melissa does or phones shouldn't be allowed on the couch. Like you just can't sit on the couch with your phone. Okay, put it in place. You're going to get some kickback. Like it's going to happen. But just know that just like how Michael describes what happens at his camp, week one doesn't look anything like week four. And I love that. I freaking love that. So just know that you have resources, you have help. You can reach out and email us here at the podcast there. You can get your kid into therapies, evaluate it, or, you know, you can just put down certain laws and rules and boundaries and standards in your home and just enforce them and enforce them and enforce them because that's our job, right? That's our job as parents to make our kids, but help our children to turn out to be the best versions of themselves possible. And I'm telling you right now, electronics is killing that cell phone, social media, it's killing it. 
it is. It is hurting their posture. It is hurting their neck. It is hurting their fingers. It is hurting their social skills, their eye contact, their brains. We talk about the different chemicals with cortisol and dopamine, all of it, all of it, you guys, it is impacting our kids. And in the podcast, we talk about like the generations and like we're parents, we're, we're the first generation. Like we don't know what we're doing. We don't know what's right and wrong. And you know what we love? Quiet. Michael says that in the podcast, like we love quiet. And what does technology provide for us? Quiet. But constantly ask yourself, this is what I constantly ask myself with my kids, and then we're going to dive into this because you guys are going to want to hear all of it. I'm constantly asking myself, what did I do when I was a kid? Seriously, like ask yourself that. Like if I was my child right now sitting on the couch with their phone or doing something else or what, like whatever they're doing or in the car, right? What did I do when I was a kid? I'd be looking out the freaking window. I'd be picking up a pen and journaling. I'd probably be talking or I'd be watching TV. Like even watching a movie is better than sitting on the phones. It is. So ask yourself that because I do it a lot. I'm constantly like, what would I be doing right now? I'd have to be interacting with my mom or my dad, or I'd probably be cleaning up my room or I'd be doing this. Or like, ask yourself that question. Like, what would I be doing? What did I do as a kid? You know, if you didn't grow up with this. So I know this podcast, it's going to be a one you love and you hate at the same time because it's bringing awareness to a problem that you don't want to face, right? Just like... But when people see me or they talk with me or they hear the podcast and they know they have a program, they're like, ugh, Melissa's talking about losing weight. I know I need to lose weight, but I don't want to do that. It's hard work. It's going to be the same thing. You're going to hear this and you're going to be like, I know my kid's addicted. Like, I get it. If I could talk to you, Melissa, while you're recording this, I'd be saying, yeah, my kid's addicted. I totally know it. I admit it. Think about that for a minute. Do you want to just keep ignoring it? Do you want them to be four years old and addicted to an iPad? Do you want them to be 14 years old and addicted to their phone? Like literally addicted. Like literally if you took it away, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. And then he talks about being 25 and still living at home. Do you want them to be 25 and still living at home? Oh my God. So think about these things. It's tough. It's hard. I know. But like, again, you're going to love this episode and hate it all at the same time. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to get you guys to leave your comfort zone and become the best people that you can be and to help raise the best humans ever. All right, check out the show notes. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am here today with Mr. Michael Jacobus. Welcome to the show, Michael. Hello, thanks for having me. Michael, we're gonna make a lot of people mad today. (laughs) <laughs> that's okay <laughs> let's just say it you guys aren't gonna like what we're talking about and then you're gonna love what we're talking about all at the same time it's gonna be a very hate love podcast episode today don't you think oh yeah yeah so michael you are the executive director of reset summer camp you're a youth development specialist i mean you are totally out there trying to help me and other people that care about this topic break the cycle of screen addiction in the youth And you really want to like equip them with like the essential life skills that they need that so many youth right now are growing up without. Exactly. They're missing out. I was telling Michael before we hit record that I have been dying to dive into this topic more. You guys have heard me talk about, you know, screen time and phones and the addiction and how much it's a problem and the rules I have set in my house that get broken all the time with phones. I mean, I drop it here and there, but we've never had an episode where we're like, this is what we're talking about. So today's the day, Michael. Okay, bring it on. (laughs) Nothing gets under my skin more. Okay, that's not true. There's a lot of things. But one of the top ones is seeing a little two or three year old walk around carrying a phone or an iPad. Oh, yeah. Every time I see a kid with a rubber covered iPad, I just think there's a future camper. (laughs) <laughs> There's a camper. There, there they are. You are my market. It is so irritating to me. And it is just, it, it is an addiction. I completely agree with that word. And I love how I was reading about you and like how you help detox kids from this at Reset Summer Camp. Yes. Detox is like the perfect word. And I don't think parents know or understand that it is a true addiction. Correct. Most parents have allowed this to happen. You know, when I talk to parents all the time, I get a lot of shame and embarrassment. You know, how did I let this happen? How did I let my kid get this far? So I always tell parents to give themselves a little bit of grace because there's no generation of parents before the current generation that have ever had the constant 24-7 onslaught 
into their kids' lives through phones, through computers, through any connected device. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like I heard a term the other day. It said that, you know, people of our generation, parents are the digital immigrants and kids today are the digital natives because the kids today are growing up, you know, with phones. Yeah. But then I heard another psychologist say, no, that's not correct. The kids today are digital orphans. And I like that a whole lot better Mm. because the digital orphans means that the digital parents didn't have this growing up. So we don't know how to teach our kids how to have good, healthy relationships with technology, how to turn it off, Mm -hmm. you know, when it's time for bed or time for a meal or, you know, time for an outside activity or school. So it's, I like digital orphan a whole lot better because there is no guide for parents to navigate their kids through the current situation. No. And like, if you think about it, anything, if there's a book out to, you know, read on it right now, it's just coming out right now. Like we're just now podcasting about it. And this is coming out now because now we can see the damage that's happening from, you know, years that have passed. It's like, you never learn anything until you have all that data collected. And now we can see, you know, like my daughter, my oldest is 18. And when she was born, like none of this was out. Like, I think I got my first blackberry when she was three or four i think (laughs) that was just a blackberry you know right and then she like started growing you know up with it it was in her world i was never one to be like here you go and just take this but we don't see until it's like almost too late and parents like you said they don't know what to do with this they don't know how to parent and then we we grew up with it. You know what I mean? Think about it. Think of how young we were. And then we just got addicted right along with them. So how are we going to cure our kids when we're just as addicted? It's like an alcoholic trying to help another alcoholic. Well, exactly. And it's funny in our program, we've interviewed a lot of therapists. And it's amazing to me how many therapists say they're qualified to deal with digital addiction because they have a background in alcohol or drug addiction. And it's not the same. It's actually more comparable to a a Mm -hmm. food or an eating disorder. You Mm. know, you have to treat that. Well, you have to eat to live. And in today's technology ridden world, you will have technology in your life. You have to check your email. You have to send a text. You know, so it's not uh, like an alcohol or a drug program where you just, you know, you enter a 12 step program, you get a sponsor, you never touch it again because that's not reality. So we tell the kids who come to our camp, this isn't punishment camp, even though they all feel they're being punished. Sure. This is learn how to get what you want in life camp. And 20 hours a day on YouTube or on a video game is not going to get you there. No, no. That's funny you use the word punishment because every time I tell, especially my oldest, I don't get it so much from my middle one. I've made her very aware. And my youngest, I'm protecting as long as I can. Like she doesn't even have a phone yet. Like good. She doesn't even have it yet. And she's in sixth grade and she's like one of the only ones. And she says that to me, like, I'm the only one. And I'm like, you know, kids always say that, but she really is one of the only ones. Like, I'm the only one that doesn't get it. I'm like, that's not true. She is one of the only ones that doesn't have it. But my oldest will use that word, punish. She's like, yeah. what am I being punished for? When I'm like, it's time to get off your phone. You know, like, what are you doing? Just sitting here in, on your phone? And I've tried, Michael. I've tried to put rules in place. Like, no cell phones are allowed on the couch. Like you can't sit on the couch with your phone. You have to stand then, I guess, or come to the kitchen counter. We have like a phone basket on the counter where it's like, put your phone in the phone basket. And I don't want them sleeping with their phones in their rooms. Right. I don't like the extra EMF exposure. A, I don't want them sleeping next to to their bed. B, it's way too easy to just sit there and scroll and scroll and scroll until you're like, I can't keep my eyes open anymore. And that's a horrible way to fall asleep. Right. Exactly. You know, but she's like, I need it for to wake up in the morning. I need the alarm. (laughs) And I'm like, my other kid has an old school one, literally battery operated old school one, but the older one and she's 18. Right. (laughs) Sleep is truly the most important thing we teach parents and we teach kids and we do at summer camp. You know, most, most of the kids who come to our program are not excited to be there. They think they're being punished, like you said. And, uh, you know, we put them to bed at 930 with lights out at 10. And, you know, kids who are used to being up till two in the morning playing video games or scrolling social media and, you know, eating Doritos and drinking Gatorade are Uh are not sleepy at 10 p.m. But then we wake them up at 630 so we can gather at seven and have breakfast at 730. And everybody's sleepy and doesn't want to get out of bed at least the first week. Mm -hmm. That's why we call it a detox. 
So, you know, by the fourth week, they're on a healthy schedule. They're on a healthy eating schedule. They're interacting socially with other kids, all kids who didn't want to be there. Then they're all friends and they're hugging before it's time to leave because they've made real world friendships. So it is possible to break the cycle, but, you know, it takes a program like ours or uh, parents can do it at home. We've actually recently created an online course for parents to kind of do a virtual summer camp at home. But the parents have to do the work. One of the challenges I see is so many parents don't know what to do and they want to send their kids somewhere to get them, quote unquote, fixed. So, you know, you can send them to a residential treatment center. That's going to run you about $80,000. You can send them to a therapeutic boarding school for a year of school, which is going to cost about $70,000. Some of the kids with more serious behavioral issues go to uh, wilderness programs, and that's twenty four grand a month. You know, you can send them to our program, which is less than eight grand for four weeks. But like I said, it's a summer camp program. So it's only available in the summer. And we have really limited space available. So we created the online program. You know, it's less than $800 and it's for everybody. So anybody can do it at any time. I love that. I love that you're offering that for parents at home. But this brings us to a very important topic that like parents have to do the work. They have to be willing. I think they probably have to be coachable. They have to be open-minded and they're going to have to put all this in place in their own lives too. Yeah. And learn how to like detox themselves. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. We challenge the parents during the camp program to do a tech-free weekend while their kids are at camp doing a tech-free month. But we also, you know, coach them on looking at their own habits with technology, their own Mm -hmm. relationships. If they sleep with their phone next to their bed, you know, we recommend getting a $4 Walmart alarm clock and put it on the desk or the dresser. Don't put it next to the bed. So you actually have to get up out of bed to go turn the alarm off. Mm -hmm. And then you're up and out of bed. So you might as well make your bed while you're up, which we teach them to do at camp. And then we close the camp program with a family workshop weekend. We require at least one parent to show up on Friday, stay through Sunday. We do a family therapy. Therapy session. We, you know, kind of cover everything the kid did in the four weeks of camp. And then we follow up with each kid for eight weeks after camp just to kind of make sure they're staying on track. Uh huh. Tell me what this looks like when these kids get here, because this would be so probably every parent listening, honestly, if they sent their kid, it would be the same situation even for their children, because I got to imagine these kids get there and they immediately are like, where's my phone? What's going on? What game can I play? And they probably don't even have the social skills at first to like ask where the bathroom is or like talk to a person be like, Hey, how do you feel about being here? Like, you know, that it's that bad, Michael, like, as you know, (laughs) like, well, we tell you, we do encourage the parents to communicate with their kid and let them know that they're coming to a detox camp. We do send them links to wilderness and therapeutic programs and, and say, you know, let the kid pick the least of the evils because our program is only a month, you know, and it's it's yeah. not it's not out in the Utah wilderness and it's not a whole year of boarding school. So we do have parents that have shown up and the kids knew nothing about it when they got there, which, <gasps> you know, we don't encourage. And then the kid is shocked and, and, it's and then they're like, experience. bye. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They just drop them off and go. So we don't encourage that. But most kids do know, even though they're against it, that they're coming to a detox camp. So uh-huh. we collect their cell phones or their MP3. Play- we collect any technology they have okay. when they arrive, which they can't stand handy. I was going to say, is there like tears? In oh, yeah. Just yeah, there's tears. Denial that this is happening. We had one girl that was uh, absolutely reluctant to turn over her phone. And she was, you know, texting right until the last second when she had to turn it in. And then the last image she saw was was her best friend at a local pizza place with her family. And another friend was in the background and she turned over her phone. And she was absolutely convinced that her friend had waited for her to go to camp to have this pizza party to exclude her and now they hate her and that was all she could think about for the first three days of camp and it was it was so bad that our clinical director actually had to call the mother and ask about this photo and it turns out that her best friend was just out to pizza with her family and there happened to be some other friend there also there was no party no plan no excluding nothing but kids immediately go to the worst possible yeah. outcome you know and and girls you know are different with their addictions than boys. Typically, most of the boys who come to camp are gamers and into video games. And most of the girls who come to camp are into social media. We do have some boys in social media and some girls who are gamers, but mostly it cuts across those lines. It just fascinates me every year. It it seems to get worse because the girl's entire self-worth 
is based on you know who they portray themselves online, how many likes they get, how many filters they've put on their personal photos. I usually ask the kids, you know, how many of you have ever posted a photo and then taken it down within an hour because it didn't get enough likes? And every single girl raises their hand, and usually some of the boys, which I find fascinating because anytime I post a video, it's because I like it. I don't, right. I don't care if anybody else likes it. Right. But with the girls, especially, it's it's in their entire lives. I hope every parent is listening to this right now and their eyes are just like as wide as mine because our kids are growing up learning their self-worth and their value based on this technology and what is on their screen. And it is so damaging, you know, and it starts so young. I mean, think about it like when we went to school and like bullying and the stories like this girl, this I'm, I so appreciate you sharing that story because It just shows too how like kids just write this story, write the story, because we have constant access on that phone to, well, what's he doing? Well, what's she doing? Well, what's my friends doing? Oh my God, they got together without me. Oh my God, I wasn't invited. And like the story is written. When we went to school, like when we left school, it was done. Like if someone wanted to talk shit on us, it happened the next day at school. We didn't sit there and hear about it all night long. And then people commented and then get bullied and, you know, like all the things. And then we're like, you know, just devastated by the time the next day school even happens, then we don't go to school. And it's just like, I mean, that's just hitting the tip of the iceberg with like confidence and girls. And yeah, yeah, it's it's actually very tragic that that this is developing this way. And because we live in such a connected society, there's nothing we can do to bypass. I mean, we can put strict rules at home, like you said, but we really need to teach parents and kids how to have healthy relationships with technology when they're on it and especially when they're off it. You know, and like we talked about sleep, you know, I I talk, one of the first things on our online program is one of the first things we talk about at camp is I'll tell kids, if you get nothing out of this four weeks, you need to understand how important sleep is. Yeah. Because without sleep, you can't, you can't be a good gamer. You can't be a good social media person. You can't be a good student. You can't be a good member of your family. You can't be good at anything if you don't get enough sleep. So I I applaud you for the, uh, you know, no phones in the bedroom. We tell parents no technology in the bedroom. We recommend that you take the phones and the power cords to the Wi-Fi and the computers. Just make sure there is nothing connected after 9 p.m. Mm You know, and then you get it back maybe on your way to school because nobody needs technology more than they need sleep. Mm -hmm. What is it actually doing to their brain? Do you know any studies or statistics of like, what is it actually doing to the development of their frontal lobe and like, oh my God, like just their ability to speak and comprehend and... Well, there are studies going on, but like you said, it's really new and studies that relate to drug and alcohol addiction are similar, but not exactly. There have been studies that show, you know, a gamer's brain is reacting very much like a cocaine addict's brain because of the cortisol stimulation Mm -hmm. in the frontal cortex. I've actually said uh, several times uh, that I think, because we talk to the kids about cortisol and dopamine. And how cortisol, you know, is the fight or flight hormone. And that mm-hmm. that hits your brain at very specific times. Usually yep. when you're scared, you know, it, it's a survival instinct. And then dopamine is the pleasure hormone. So if you have a really good meal, if you're having sex, you know, that's when dopamine hits. By playing these video games and to a lesser extent, the social media stuff, your brain is being hit with cortisol and dopamine constantly, Constant. all the time, like multiple times per second. So I've gone on record of saying, I'm guessing that today's teenagers are going to be the early onset Alzheimer's patients when they're in their 40s because their brains are being so manipulated by these hormones that are not meant to hit your brain very often. I completely agree. Like, I mean, we're totally like, like off the record, nothing's official, but I, I like, I agree with you. And that hit, oh my God. And I deal with that with like women and fitness and health, you know, and stuff. And when they are in that constant state and that cortisol is just hitting their body, they won't lose weight. They're, you know, starting to develop hormonal imbalance and getting facial hair and they have the extra fat around their belly and they're not sleeping well. And then they can't sleep or when they do sleep, they wake up and it's just that level just from a health, you know, and fitness perspective is so damaging. And now children are getting it at levels they've never gotten before. Well, and another thing, I'll I'll ask the kids at camp, I'll say, raise your hand if you still want to be living with your parents when you're 25. And nobody raises their hand. 
<laughs> okay, I was afraid and that you were going to say everyone no, raise their hand. No, <laughs> nobody wants to. Yeah. And then I'll say, so what are you doing to make sure that doesn't happen? And it's silent. And then we go into you know, a, a class I teach called What's Your Financial Footprint? And we talk about what it actually costs them to live that somebody else is currently paying. And, you know, we talk about rent and insurance and cost of school, and but we talk about cost of car and cost of gasoline and how often they go to Starbucks and uh, what their online life, you know, how many subscription services are they? We tell them if you don't pay for the product, you are the product. So like most social media is free. So, you know, and these social media companies are not in business for your fun and enjoyment they're in business for your time your money your friends you know right and video games well when i was a younger kid you had to go to an arcade to play a video game that's how old i am but uh <laughs> once you got you know into home-based video games they had a screen called game over you actually finished the game you could start again and try to beat your high score and things like that but yeah. today's video games are all online and they don't end there's always a new quest there's always a new loot box there's always a new adventure there's always a new group to play there, there's no end to today's video games with the exception of a game like Fortnite, which is a, a first person shooter last man standing kind of game soon as you end that game you go into the lobby where you have the opportunity to make lots of purchases with real world money to buy fake stuff i don't know any of this so i'm learning as you're talking yeah this. yeah uh, and Fortnite. then you go right and then you go right back into the game we actually started reset in 2018 when every kid in the country he seemed to be addicted to Fortnite. Mm -hmm. We had a kid come to camp who had spent $13,000 on skins. Skins in a video game is what your character looks like. So, you know, when uh, the Patriots won the Super Bowl, you could buy your favorite jersey uniform and your character would look like this football player. So there are kids out there that have virtual wardrobes full of outfits that they all paid, you know, between twenty four ninety five and sixty nine ninety five for that they will never use again because it was exciting in the moment, and now the moment has passed. And like the kid who spent thirteen thousand, that was on the debit card his parents had given him. I, that's his what mom's, I was going to ask. <laughs> then his mom's credit card, then his grandmother's credit card, and finally his best friend's mother's credit card, because kids today have no concept of money. They have they actually never touch cash, hardly ever. You know, because everything is digital and online uh -huh. and, and virtual. So they really have no concept of money. Mm -mm. So spending thing, you know, buying a skin in a game doesn't mean anything to them, especially if they're not paying the credit card bill. It's nothing real. It's nothing you can it's even- It's virtual. No, it's completely virtual. This is just blowing my mind right now because I don't allow like video games in my home. Now I have all girls, so- probably a little so you bit have more easier. social media issues we deal with the social media issues and stuff but this is blowing my mind right now and and while they're in this virtual world whether it's something they're building or Fortnite or call of duty or i don't know i, yeah. I do know that name because I, I do have nephews while they're in there interacting so much with like people from other places that they never meet these kids, I mean, our social skills, they've got to just be tanking. Oh, yeah. They all speak in acronyms and abbreviations, and their language is horrible because everybody else's language is horrible. It's the lowest common denominator issue. And when the kids come to camp, they have virtually zero social skills. Oh, my God. Yeah, I can see that. Like, because think about it, if you're constantly like on your phone, you're not paying attention. Like I went up, I coached my daughter's high school volleyball team this year. I was an assistant coach. And so I was at the school campus a lot and I would just be passing kids with their head down on their phone, sitting in the hallway on their phone. No one was like really interacting. And I, I'm just observing because I'm a weirdo. Like I'm totally aware of all this stuff. So I'm just like a weirdo watching all of this. And I'm just like, does anyone say hi anymore? Does any, no. is, is anyone like wrestling in the grass anymore? <laughs> like no, kids everybody's like on their phones. Just constantly. And actually schools, some schools are prohibiting phones or starting to prohibit phones, especially in the UK. And they're seeing a marked increase in productivity from students and social behaviors. I mean, it's, it's not a hard thing to do to it's prohibit not. a phone. I got super mad around like seventh grade that I started to notice that they were like required. Like, yeah, that's the age. I think my daughter got finally got one, uh, like one of my old ones or something, because she's like, I have to, the, the teacher's making us do this assignment in school on our phone or like, and I'm like, 
Like, like that's yeah. terrible. <laughs> I'm in Southern California, and I remember when the LA school district was so proudly announced that every student will get an iPad to do their work. <laughs> and oh, don't worry, they're all secured. You know, they can't use them for anything but schoolwork. And if you want to see how fast an iPad can go through a jailbreak, uh, give it to a 14-year-old. Right. They, they will be surfing YouTube and watching porn inside 10 minutes. Nothing secure then? No. Nothing secure. No. And from a social media, speaking of daughters, I tell parents, if you ask your kid to show you their Instagram and they have to log in, it's not their Instagram. <laughs> oh, good tip. <laughs> there are apps on phones that actually look like calculators that if you click it, it'll open up your Instagram. But if your parent looks at your phone, they just think it's a calculator, so they'll swipe right by it. So the technology is faster than the parents can follow. Then you can keep up. Yeah, so my only advice to parents, like I get asked all the time, what's the hottest video game this, the, you know, right now? And I'm like, it doesn't matter because you can't keep up anyway. Anytime I do a, a parent talk, you know, I do a lot of parent school talks about, you know, what's what's the dangers of social media or, you know, dangers of video mm -hmm. games. And I'll talk and I'll at the end of it, I'll say, now you can forget everything I just said. Because while I've been talking, six new games came out, two new yeah. apps, three new ways to cover up the, I mean, you can't keep up other than communicating with your kid. Today's episode is brought to you by LifeWave. Many of you have been noticing these little patches I've been wearing all over my body. Sometimes you'll see it on the back of my neck, above my right knee, just below my belly button, on the inside of my wrist, on my chest. These patches are new technology that activate the stem cells in your body, resetting them to a younger state using light therapy. I know it sounds crazy, but I love having this platform and this podcast to share with you new products that are changing my life. And these LifeWave patches are doing exactly that. Now I had a friend recommend them to me for different back pain that I was having and different issues. I was hesitant at first. I'm like, how is a little patch going to help me? You guys, within just a couple days, I noticed within the first few days that I had more energy during the day. I was in less pain and I had greater strength during my workouts. My muscle mass has actually increased and I have less anxiety. They have one patch called an Eon patch. I put it right on my chest, behind my neck. If I'm having a headache or if I'm having a little bit more anxiety for the day, they have been a game changer for me. So how does this work, right? Go check out www.lifewave.com forward slash bomb mom. There is a ton of really good information on there under the learn tab, and it'll explain it all better than I can in this short break. Once you check it out, send me a message on Instagram. It's Melissa Vogel or email me info at melissavogelfitness.com. I will share with you which ones I am using and how you can get them for yourself. I am happy to answer any questions that I can. These little patches have changed my daily life, my workout routine, my overall health and recovery. And I'm so excited to be able to share them with you. Yeah. Why aren't you in the schools in every school? Like what you're teaching at camp, I'm sitting here going, why is this not a whole course or part of their curriculum in school? You know, because it starts at, at home. It starts yeah. with the parents. Mm -hmm. You can tell kids all day long you need to sleep and they'll nod and agree and then they'll stay on their phones all night mm -hmm. uh, unless the parents retake the parenting authority. I can't tell you how many times I tell parents, stop being the pal and yes. start being the parent. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, your kids will have plenty of friends throughout their lives. You don't need to necessarily be one of them. Mm -hmm. You need to be the disciplinarian at home, the person who sets the rules and the expectations. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It means you have rules in your house and you need to lead by example. You can't yell at your kid for being on their phone at the dinner table while you're on yours. Exactly. So I think parents have just relinquished the authority yeah. to big tech and they need to get it back. Yeah. And I know there's parents listening. I always try to be like the devil's advocate, you know, while I'm talking with our guests and stuff, because I know there's parents listening going, do you know what will happen if I take my iPad from the three-year-old or we cut off screen time? Like it is going to be a complete meltdown city. And I say three-year-old, but like I've literally watched my older children go through fits and mad at me. And I'm like, are you for real right now? Are you seriously acting like this? Because I took your phone and I'm like, let's all go for a walk. Let's all watch a movie together. I know it's still technology, but like, let's all be together and laugh and talk about it. Yeah. And I see this. So I know there's parents listening going, I don't know if I can make it through like the temper tantrum that will happen. 
Well, and that's A, that's correct. And B, that's why we created the online course to kind of help guide parents through mm-hmm. this. But it is correct that when you establish rules in your house, you will have meltdowns. We have yep. meltdowns at camp. It passes. Yeah, we you know? have imagine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the kids who are addicted to their technology, it is an addiction and it will take some time to come off. And because it's technology and not alcohol or drugs, you know, they will get little bits of it, you know, continuing. But mm-hmm. little bits is fine. You know, like I said, 20 hours a day is not fine. And I love what you suggest. Watch a movie. You know, yes, that's technology, but it's passive and you can communicate during it and you can make popcorn and you can laugh and you can spend time as a family. That's perfectly fine use of technology. Mm -hmm. One of the life skills things we teach kids in addition to like how to do their own laundry is how to cook. And we'll say, you know, YouTube is a great resource for cooking videos. If you need to learn how to host a chicken, look it up on YouTube. That's a great Mm -hmm. resource, great use of technology, but you don't need to watch the video for 20 hours. You know, Mm -hmm. you watch it once, pause it, do what they say, and then make the meal and then you're done. Yeah. God, I love that you have the online course now. And this is brand new, right? You said Yeah, we launched it last week. Oh my God. (laughs) Like brand new, brand new. Oh, this is awesome. And I'm going to just add in my two cents here because I am, I am not a youth development specialist like you, but it is going to be constant parents. Like you have to constantly be aware of what they're doing. Like my kids will come home. If I let them take their shoes off, sit on the couch and look at their phone. And I will have to come in and be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Nothing. Or, you know, and I'm like, if you didn't have a phone, what would you be doing right now? Exactly. I'm I'm constantly telling them like, you're rotting your brain. You're sitting there rotting your brain. You are killing your brain every time you swipe and swipe. And I said, you are just shocking your brain. You have to think about it as like shocks, shocks, shocks to your brain. And what happens if you continuously got shocked by something? Yeah. You are, you are going to alter that. Exactly. That's what has to be broken. Mm -hmm. What are some signs that parents can look for that their kid's addicted? I'm afraid well, to ask this question. No, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's actually very obvious. You know, if, if they're, uh, we reclusive. need the obvious though, Michael, like we, we need the obvious. If they're reclusive, you know, so many parents, when I speak to parent groups, I'll say, what's the one thing that we all love at home more than anything. And then I'll advance, you know, my screen and I have the word quiet up there. And I'm like, we, we, as parents love it when it's quiet and we tell ourselves they're up there doing their homework. Isn't it great? And they're not up there doing their homework. They're up there playing video games or swiping on their phone. They have their earphones on. They're, you know, on Discord chatting with people they don't know. So, you know, when they are reclusive, when they are not involving themselves in family activities, it can be a dinner or going for a walk or anything. When they are depressed all the time, usually for a lack of sleep and the excessive cortisol and dopamine hits they're getting. It's funny because I'll, I'll have parents say, you know, at what age is it okay to let my kid have Instagram? And I'll say, well, at what age is it okay to expose them to porn? Because that's <laughs> what you're doing. I agree. They will see it. Grand Theft Auto 5, which is one of the hot games these days, you can actually visit a strip club in that game. Stop. Yeah. And kids play this? Yeah. Now, the game companies say, well, it's for mature audiences only, so you have to be 18 to, to buy the game. But that, you know, that doesn't fly. And <laughs> Thank you know, God that's on there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the gaming companies are not on their own going to fix this problem. Neither are the social media companies. And even the iPhone creators, you know, with AI coming on, you know, there's more and more fake stuff that kids think is real stuff. So, you know, again, it, it's just about communicating with your kid. I'll, I'll recommend parents, you know, actually play a game with their kid. If their kid is really into video game, sit and watch them play or create your own character in their game and play it with them. You might think it's the dumbest, stupidest thing in the world, but your kid loves it. So learn what it is that they love. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you're not going to still restrict their time. Same thing with social media. And this is more difficult because so many girls are so protective of what they're doing. And they're protective because it's embarrassing, quite honestly. But I'll I'll tell parents in a non-judgmental way, Ask your kid to show you what they're doing on social media, show you what they're posting, what they're commenting on, who's commenting on them. You can talk about it, but don't be judgmental about it. Mm -hmm. And that will open up the communication to do it again tomorrow and then do it again tomorrow and get them used to you being involved. And I'll tell parents, chances are you paid for that device. Chances are you pay for that online subscription. Why in the world do you think you don't have a right to know what's going on on a device that you pay for? That's very true. And I think we have to remind the parents too, over and over again, if you do this and you ask like, let me see, you know, like what's going on, you can't freak out. 
Right. You can't, if you can't freak out on your child at that moment, especially if it's like a girl and she posts a picture of like a selfie in her bikini, you know, and you're, you want to be like, what the fuck are you doing? You, you yeah. gotta be like, okay, I asked to see, I need to take this in and become aware of what is happening. And the last thing I know we're running along. The last thing I'll say is one time uh, at camp, I'll ask how many kids have uh, online friends who you've never met in the real world. And almost every kid raises their hands. And so that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes a kid is just playing with another kid Mm -hmm. who lives in another city. But I'll tell parents if they're concerned about it, arrange a a Zoom or a FaceTime call with your kid and that kid and that kid's parents and you. And it can be a one or two minute thing. You just want to kind of confirm that the person on the other end is who they say they are. And I guarantee you those parents will be appreciative of it as well. If the kid is reluctant to do that, then chances are they aren't who they say they are. God. Because we go through the whole predators thing too. Yeah. And and that's another, a whole nother issue. My daughter just told me the other day a story that her friend was out with a guy. They were like on a date or something that she met off of Snapchat. And thank God it really was another teenager and it it really did happen. But I sat there and I tried to use that as like a teachable moment, you know, and, and be like, okay, you do know, right? And you have to remember that that could have totally been someone else that she trusted and met. And that could have went way wrong. Yeah, She may have never come home, may have never come home. And she just kind of like sat there and she's like, well, they've been talking for a while. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's exactly what predators do. (laughs) Exactly. Fake pictures, fake everything. I'm like, you don't know. And then. You know, you go to this parking lot, even if you're meeting at like Chick-fil-A and you go to the parking lot and it could be two men and one gets in one side of your car and the other takes you out and like, we're never seeing you again. And you thought you were meeting Bobby, the 17 year old football player. Yeah. And that's really hard to communicate to kids because they know everything, of course. Right. They know everything (laughs) for sure. I got to ask too, do you see, are you seeing physical changes with kids that come to camp? Because that was another thing, me being in world of health and fitness and body and stuff, the posture. Oh Oh. my God, Michael. The posture and the obesity. And the obesity. I'm bringing awareness to this. Like I'll take pictures of my kids. If I see them sitting weird, I'm constantly like sit up, shoulders back, and I'll take pictures of them and show them and be like, this is what you look like. And they're like, oh my God, that's so cringy. And I'm like, no, but literally this is what you look like. And hunched over, head forward, you know, like stomach, like caved in because they're so rounded forward. Like, are you seeing this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Almost every kid that comes to camp has what we call the iPhone hunch, which, you know, because- The iPhone to, hunch. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're used to having their shoulders up and their phone down and looking at it. So that's, that's what they all look like. And most, I'd say most of them, maybe 75% of them are, have weight issues. You know, they're not, they're not massively overweight, but, but they, they have, you know, childhood obesity because Mm -hmm. all they do is go to school if they go to school (sighs) and come home and sit on their computers. They don't get any exercise, which is why it's one of the critical components of the life skills program that we do at camp. Are you making them like get out and run and do stuff and like, yeah, (laughs) climb, use their fingers to climb. We do hiking. We do a zip line. We go to the beach once a week, you know, and they can sit and and pout on the beach or they can grab a surfboard and come in. And it's funny, the first week, nobody goes in the water. Usually they all just sit and pout and they don't want to be there and they want to go home. And then by the second and the third week, we can't get them out of the water. So, you know, it's, it's like I say with parents, you know, there will be a meltdown when you establish rules. And I usually recommend parents start with an apology. I didn't know it was as bad as it is. I'm so sorry. Yes, it's your fault, parents, but you can fix it. You know, Mm -hmm. your fault was yesterday. So let's work on today and moving forward. Yeah. Today, moving forward, the very first thing I tell parents to do is we're going to get eight hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start, you know, I recommend 10 p.m. So we're going to collect up the devices at 9 p.m. So your brain has time to have the melatonin kick in and you start getting sleepy and we're going to get up at 6 a.m. And if that doesn't work for you, then adjust the schedule you know, later or earlier or whatever, especially on school nights, though. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get eight hours of sleep not connected to any device. And to do that for at least a month to get that ingrained before you take on other aspects of their addictions. Yeah. Have you ever done or considered doing like a documentary of this camp and like following one of your four week 
we've been contacted by numerous uh, film companies to do Dude, a documentary. You should. Well, what's funny is they all want to catch the kid first. You know, if you go to our website, you'll see the Today Show piece where they videoed one of our campers. But it's hard to identify the kid ahead of time mm-hmm. who would be a good candidate because we don't know how successful they're going to be in the program. Yeah. And the other thing is the shame and embarrassment that the parents feel. Yeah, we yeah. we have we we kind of stopped asking for referrals and and reviews because even though the parents are glowing and love us at the end of the four weeks, mm-hmm. they don't really want to tell the world that my kid had to go to a digital detox program, and he's doing so much better now. They they don't want. I get that. that. Yeah. So yes and no. I mean, we've we've had film crews at camp before, but but it it's it's a challenge. It yeah, the privacy thing, dealing with kids, the shame, like all of it. I get it, but like just from an educational standpoint, it would be so eye opening to watch a child and the whole process of them going there, throwing the fit, being upset, not wanting to be involved. To opening up like oh my god having conversation eye contact with another human and that's starting and they're eating and they're laughing again and then being able to see that transition like that would be so like just educational for parents to yeah i think if we were to do something like that a lot of it would have to be staged and it wouldn't actually be the real actual kid happening but like i said you know the today show did a piece on us we've been in a couple documentaries so there's it's there. There's but, things you can see. But then, yeah. you know, with the de- denial of parents, you know, they're, they're all, it's funny because when I used to run regular traditional summer camps, you know, I'd sign you up next year before you left this year. And I'd mm-hmm. sign your little brother up and your cousin and your best friend. So I'd be full by December. With this program, so many parents are in denial. We don't fill up until April or May for a July program because the kid promised they'd get their grades up promise they'd stop yeah. playing video games you know the, the kid will say anything to get the conversation over right so then they can go back to their social media or their video games mm-hmm. and so by the time parents are realizing oh damn summer's coming and my kid has been on their video games you know mm-hmm. we don't want them on their video games 24 hours a day then they register for camp right right i'm gonna add this little part in because it just came to my head while before we wrap up here, I feel like we could talk for another two hours on this. <laughs> like I could just keep going with you, Michael. But I think one of the signs too that your child has a problem is, and, and you should be concerned, is if like they don't know what to do with themselves if they don't have their phone. And, you know, with when this airs, I think our Christmas break will be coming up soon. I think by the time we get this out, we'll be looking at around like Christmas break and kids will be home a little bit more. Parents will be listening to this. And if that phone isn't an option and they don't know what to do with themselves, I think that's a big sign of like, okay, we need to address this. We really need to address this. Cause I've seen it before. I've seen it kit with kids here and I'm like, no phones. And I've seen children, teenagers literally pace like a lion at the zoo that's trapped. Yeah. And that's kind of part of the the detox that that parents have mm-hmm. to deal with. Which again is why we created the online course to help guide them through that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not one other thing we also say at the beginning of the course is both parents need to be on the same page. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of parents that the mother is freaking out that this is a problem and the dad thinks it's not such a big deal. So parents really need to communicate and ask themselves, do we want this kid living with us when they're 25? Because even if you think it's not a big deal, the kid's going to be living with you when they're 25, 30, 35, unless you get a handle on this. Mm -hmm. And then the other key issue is to get their kid assessed. You know, uh, a lot of kids today have behavioral or cognitive deficiencies or challenges. I can't tell you how many times I tell parents it is not a personal failure on your part no, no. if your child has a behavioral or cognitive challenge. Mm-hmm. So, you know, getting them assessed, getting them the right therapy, getting them the right medication if they need it is going to make a world of difference and help a lot if you're taking them through a detox. Yeah. And if you get them assessed and you find out that they do have a certain condition or something else is going on, thank God you did that and that you can help them take the right steps with, you know, being addicted and have to go through this technology, because if you don't create changes, it's just going to get worse. You know, they're going to be a kid with like ADHD, and then they're going to be 17 with, you know, severe depression, anxiety, which you could have just, you know, kept it here, but it just got worse and grew by the time they were 17. 
I would say half the kids that come to camp every year have obvious challenges and have never been diagnosed. Half. So it, yeah, at least half. And it can be something like depression or anxiety, but right. it can be ADD, ADHD. We've had some obvious uh, mild Asperger's and it's mm -hmm. never been diagnosed. And if it gets diagnosed, it can be treated with therapy and medication and the kid will respond better. But yeah. so many parents think the kid's just lazy. You know, they're just on their games because there's nothing else to do and they're not into sports. They don't want to join a club at school. They're dumb. They're stupid. Mm. Uh, so they're just on their phones and they're just lazy. Well, so sometimes they are. Right. And sometimes they have a, a cognitive challenge right. that needs to be addressed first. Okay. I got to ask because I know parents are probably wondering, where is this camp? Where is Reset Summer Camp at? Well, we started Reset Summer Camp in Santa Barbara, California. Okay. And, and we've been running there for six years. This will be our seventh summer next summer. Uh, we also have a license program in Canada outside of Montreal. Oh. And we're looking at opening another program in Asheville, North Carolina, but that hasn't been established yet. Okay. So, I mean, one of the reasons we created the online course is we have parents who, you know, can't afford it or yep. can't, can't uh, you know, it's too far away or we have other summer plans during that time. And, you know, I could have franchised the concept and, you know, had it all over the country and it would have closed down in two years because it, it has to be run right. You have to have the right therapeutic team. You have to have the right staff. So I'd rather build it slow and steady sure. than, than really big. And we have kids from all over the country and from other countries come and attend our program. So, and again, I, I created the online course to reach more people because yeah. we can only, we can, we only take 24 kids in a four week session at each location. So so we, we it's not even a drop in the bucket. So hopefully the online course will reach more. Right. Oh, brilliant. Like that was the best path for you to go as an online well, course. And, people and also the, the cost of the online course, if, if you do the online course and you think you still need help, we will deduct the entire cost of the online course from your camp tuition if your kid oh, wow. gets accepted into camp. So it's really a, a, a free course if you end up sending your kid to the program. Yeah, for sure. Oh my God. I love that you created this tool for people that you can help no matter where you are. And then, like, just because I always bring it back and make similarities, like I stopped training in person. Like I don't personal train in person anymore. And I'm totally online now. And that allowed me to not just work with people in my community. I work with women all across the country now, other countries, you know, yeah. so I see what you're doing. I get it. And I'm telling you, you went the right direction to be able to open that door and help other people. So well done, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well done. Okay. We're going to put everything in the show notes, but how can people find this course? How can they work with you? Are you on social media? What's your website? Give it to me. Well, it's resetsummercamp.com. Okay. That's kind of is the starting point for everything. You know, in the header, it says new online course. You can click on that. That'll take you to the online course. The resetsummercamp.com website has everything we do at camp. It has the Today Show video okay. on the front page, and it has links to our socials too. So it's it's really about getting kids to have a healthy relationship with technology in balance with sleeping and school and family time and real world social interactions. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, which is exactly what this world needs right now. It's time for parents to wake up. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> we have to. If we don't, I'm scared what we'll look like in 10, 15, 20 years. Oh yeah, I am too. Oh my God. And you get a front row seat to all that, but you also get the front row seat to the transition and the change. And oh the yeah. I mean, the changes we see at camp and our kids is amazing. And it only took, you know, four weeks. So again, parents who are afraid of the, the meltdown, it's okay. They will melt down. It, they will get over it. They will get over it. Amen. Oh, Michael, thank you so much for coming on. I would love to have you back. Like sure. maybe after like the summer camp, like you have another session or something, like come back, like let's keep this conversation going. Yeah, no problem. There's so many things that we can keep talking about. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. So, and you see it, you got that front row seat. So thank you again for coming on. What like this was been, this has been like amazing. And I think exactly what we needed right now. My pleasure. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy until next time. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.